speech, which amazes me when I heard him, I was able to be the evaluator for Corey's third speech. I didn't realize it about halfway through that it was on his third speech. I would have thought it was maybe his 15th speech. He's so smooth. So if you will give a round of applause for Corey, his speech will be Blind Date with a Destiny. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, it is such a great evening to be here with you tonight. And the title of my speech is A Blind Date with Destiny. Have you ever had a conversation that goes a little like this? Dexter, what's going on, my man? How you doing? Oh, nothing much, man. Just relax. What's that? Oh, you had a date with a young lady this weekend? Is that the one you met at the social? Oh yeah, great girl, great girl. You must be really excited about that. Okay, so you guys got a date set up? Okay, not bad, look at you, moving pretty quick, huh? So it's this Saturday, okay. And she's she's going on a date, oh, but she has a friend. Okay, wait a minute, so what does this have to do with me? Oh, she won't go on the date unless she has a friend with her? So is that why you call me? Are you telling me I have to go on a blind date with this girl? Oh gosh, are you serious? Okay, all right, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. I have no idea what to prepare for, so hey, I'll just go with you. Any of you ever been in that position? Yeah. Where you go on a blind date? Now, the experience of preparing for a blind date can be very unsettling, because you're thinking about, well, what do they look like? I've never met them. What do they smell like? <laughs> How do they dress? What kind of car does he drive? What does he do? Am I going to be looking at my watch, waiting for this date to end quickly? What kind of excuse am I going to think about so I can get out of this thing as quickly as possible? Can they carry on an intelligent conversation? Is this someone I possibly might marry? Nah, it's a blind. Now, many of us have had these thoughts because, again, the experience of preparing for a blind date can be very unsettling because there's so much there that we have no idea of what to expect. Toastmasters and guests, guess what? I've got a blind date set up on July the 3rd, 2014. Now, many of you are looking at me and you probably saw my hand and noticed the ring on my finger and said, whoa, there's probably something I don't need to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention planning out pretty far in advance. I mean, it's three months away. But Toastmasters and guests, the date that I'm preparing for is the arrival of my son on July the 3rd, 2014. Now let me tell you, this experience, oh my goodness, it is so unsettling because I have no idea what he looks like. I have no idea how is he going to take to me. So all of those things that I just listed are going through my mind right now. And many of you are prepared for a blind date, so I have three things I want to share with you that I think we need to have in mind as we prepare for that blind date. The first is the way that we look. How do we prepare the way we look on the outside? I've got a lot of work to do, Toastmasters. I have to get myself in shape. Because studies show that within the first three seconds of meeting someone, we're able to formulate an opinion. We're able to assess that person. So by the time I say, how are you? I'm Corey Graham. Nice to meet with you. And your name is? Diana. Diana, it's a pleasure to meet with you. An opinion has already been made. An assessment of that person has already been made within that short time frame. Now when my son arrives into this world, he's going to be taking in so much, hearing so much, seeing, tasting. And my first impression, when he sees me, what is he going to considering his vision is going to be about 8 to 10 inches in length in terms of what he's able to see. But what is he going to capture when he takes, when he sets his eyes on you? When he enters this world from his mother's womb, which from what I heard is a very scary sight. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to see? 
What mental images will he take in of me? The next is, we focus on the way that we look. What is it that I say? What is it that I do? The way that we think is a reflection of what it is that we say and what it is that we do. He's going to watch every move I make, every decision I make. He's drawing in everything. He is my top number one audience right there. Watch every move. What is he thinking? What is he taking in? What is he processing in that little mind? Also, I have to have an open mind. Am I willing to take risks? Is he going to see me take risks? Is he going to see me enjoy the process? Deepak Chopra, from the book called The Seven Laws of Spiritual Success, he talks about detaching yourself away from the outcome. Why do you detach yourself away from the outcome? So that you can allow yourself to enjoy the experience and become friends with uncertainty. As I prepare for this date on July 3rd, 2014, I'm preparing the way I look. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do. And I'm going to approach it with an open mind. And I can't wait for that moment when it comes. Mr. Toastmaster.